Welcome to another program in our series, Free Thinking Forum. I'm delighted to have my friend Pat Samples here. Uh, she will be helping us learn about aging with gusto. Aha, uh -huh. yes. <laughs> Tell me what prompted you, your interest in vital aging. Well, Bill, I, I, when I was about, when I turned 50, I realized I'd been alive for 50 years. I had probably another 50 years to go. And I w really wanted to see, could I, how could I create that second half of my life so it was meaningful? So I got kind of excited about how to start shaping my older years, and it kind of prompted me to go back to school, get a couple of graduate degrees in, in writing and in, and in paying attention to how older people learn, how older people uh, experience uh, the vitality that's, that keeps people going. And so I got excited about it, and. I've really committed myself to a vision of all of us as we get older to ex to view and experience the gifts that that we are and the gifts that life is right up until our last breath. So that's been kind of my push for many years, and uh, it has helped shape a whole lot of different experiences that I've had and different activities that I've gotten involved in to support vital aging. Beautiful. I, I'm glad that excited you early enough to yes. get those degrees. Yes. And apply your uh, your learning right. to uh, this project of Vital Aging Network. Yes. Uh, and will you tell us more about Vital Aging Network? Sure, actually the Vital Aging Network has been around for about 20 years and it's it's really older people coming together to uh, to assist other older people in, in living a very vital life as we get older. And so it's 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 mostly volunteer uh, organization, and it's about helping to stimulate you know self really self determination and civic engagement, uh, personal growth, so that we can really be in charge of our own aging process and not wait for somebody else to tell us what to do or to set up some kind of program for us. Good. Well, uh, we've see, seen the slide with uh, aging with gusto and how it's related to Vital Aging Network. Uh, what drew you to work with the Aging with Gusto program? Well, I think it again built on a long history I've had of working with older adults in, in developing different kinds of programming and supporting this whole area of vital aging. And I've been myself very uh, concerned really about the age of stereotypes that that people go around um, saying, "Well, you know, you're just you're kind of too old for that," and oh, those really? kind of yeah, those kind of messages. I mean, I'm sure you've heard them, and they really keep keep people uh, afraid, keep people backed away, keep people afraid to get old. And I'm I'm really passionate about changing that paradigm. So the same thing with Festo program. Yeah, I I get that, and you're such a, pre, a premier example of. Of aging with a with a, a dynamic energy and some volunteering and some really caring about the community, those things that really keep keep you animated, keep you contributing to the world. So the Aging with Gusto program is designed to educate people and and get into a discussion about that kind of discussion that's hard, sort of hard to have because mostly people talk about aging and it's it's they they're poking fun at it. Or they're talking about, oh, you're so it's hard or whatever, and very few places allow a really genuine conversation with peers to say, what 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 is this aging business really like? What are we about? What it is we have to face? How do we do this well? Uh, what's getting in our way? All those kinds of things. So aging with gusto is about creating conversations that uh, stimulate that kind of uh, engagement. Yeah, maybe we should pause a second and uh, define what exactly is ageism. Well, ageism is w one of the things we're trying to counter. We're trying to look at developing more positive views of aging. And really aging, I see, is, is a way of how we give meaning to getting older. And in most cases, ageism comes across as a negative way of seeing old, getting older as a negative experience. And so we invite people into conversations about that to see what kind of views people maybe have been shaped by over time and if they can maybe find another, maybe more positive way to engage with the experience of aging. 
Could you give us some examples? Well, I can, Bill. Actually, it was just a, just a few weeks ago, a very nice gentleman at church who I greatly respect, you know, said, well, how are you today, young lady? And I just cringed. I was like, uh, and, you know, he thought he was being nice. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm actually not young, and I have no interest in being young. I really enjoy being older. I'm grateful that I get to be older. And I celebrate that, and I want that honored and valued. I, I don't. I have no need to be young or to think of myself as young. And he said, "Well, you're, but you're young at heart." And I said, "No, actually, I have a wise elder heart." And <laughs> yeah, I just thought, you know, I, I, there's this notion that if you're not young, there's something wrong with you, or you should have the aspiration to be like you were when you were young. And I don't have that aspiration, and I don't. I think it's demeaning to have people, and you know, I know there's different opinions about this, but for me it's, it really is, I think, a prime example. And then just a few days later, I saw a medical professional for an appointment, and the first thing he said was, hello, young lady. And I had to start up again and say, uh, you know, that actually doesn't, that doesn't sit well with me. And so I find myself trying to educate people about and, and get that conversation going because nobody's really confronting those things in a way that uh, that gets, kind of wakes people up to this whole area of ageism. And it's, it's very pervasive. Maybe we should let it be known that young lady or young man is not a compliment. Exactly, exactly. It, it's a way of uh, trying to get away from the fact that you really are old. It is. And hopefully wiser. Well, and it, it devalues, it devalues. Uh, how we are, you know, being older. So, yes, I think there's this sense that only young is good. Now, and now how does aging, ageism affect us? Well, in quite a number of ways, the, the stereotypes that we see everywhere about, about being old and uh, that, again, we should be younger, that being old is a bad thing, uh, that it, it's a way of uh, creating a prejudice against our, our future selves. I mean, who wants to be thought of as something, you know, going downhill and getting negative? That that's uh, nobody wants to, you know. Not me. You're right. No, uh, <laughs> I I mean I'm enjoying life more than I ever have, yes. and I want to continue being able to do that. And I don't want to be afraid of growing old. So I'm and I'm inviting people to be thinking about how do we uh, keep from being afraid of being old and because ageism stigmatizes old age it's like yes. it's a bad thing and we mm -hmm. we shouldn't we shouldn't be i mean that's kind of ridiculous when you think we shouldn't get old well of course we all want to get older that's that's part of being alive well i'll have to rewrite a song uh, what's that young at heart yeah well it, yeah, sure i mean it's you know those images of young at heart i mean it's it's good intention in that in in that sense but uh Again, it sort of emphasizes that notion of of having to be young to be okay, and so you know, ageism affects it. It it helps us not be comfortable with who we are. It's we're supposed to be something else, and it has negative health uh, and longevity effects. The research actually shows that people who have a positive outlook toward aging live seven and a half years longer than people who have a negative view of aging. That's significant. That's well, seven and a half years worth of of reason to change, you know, change our minds about how we think about aging. And we lose our voice. I mean, how many people do you know, Bill, and I'm sure you've seen this, is they feel invisible. It's like, oh, I'm retired. Oh, well, let's just change the conversation because you're not, you don't, you're not a value anymore. You're not important anymore because you've retired, supposedly. And uh, so there's uh, older people just kind of disappear and aren't, aren't heard from, or they think they're just a bunch of you know, old fogies or something. So, and, and really, we've got this enormous wealth of older people who have so much to contribute and so much wisdom. And I, you know, I, don't, I, I suspect that's probably true with you too, Bill, but I really notice how many skills and experiences I have that I can bring to bear on any situation in my life that I didn't have when I was 30. And I, you know, I don't want to go back to be 30. I want to be able to keep cultivating and, and making use of these, this learning that I've already had. Now, you've already spoken of some benefits that might come from ageism. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you care to tell us more about that? Well, the, the, I mean, the, there's some negative, neg definite negative effects, and, and I, I want to 
invite all of us to be addressing ageism, to create a more positive uh, perception of aging, and to counteract these assumptions and stereotypes that are so prevalent out there. It's really about changing the narrative on aging, so we can see aging as a positive experience, as something that we want to en engage in and be excited about and look forward to, and look at forward to it as a as a fulfilling stage of life, which I'm certainly experiencing it as. It's it's just very very exciting time, and it, it, there isn't you know there isn't this thing called aging that's defined in some concrete way. Every one of us does it differently. We're each an individual. We each have different experiences of aging. And yet, again, with these stereotypes, I bet, you know, if you ask a kid to pretend like they're old, they're going to walk around huddled over with a cane as if that's what old age is. And it's so much broader than that. It's yep. so much more than that. So we want to make sure we're using, making use of all of these resources that older people like you and I have to, to bring to the table and embrace you know, where we are as we age. Yeah. Now, uh, there's some famous person that said something about whenever someone stands up. What yes, is it? exactly, exactly. Uh, Gloria Steinem talks about you know, if, if, somebody's gonna, if somebody stands up and says something, and then another person stands up, and then another person stands up and says, wait a minute, this is wrong. We, the, the numbers start to grow. And so I realized that when I used to just, when people would say, oh, you look, you know, oh, you look, you look so young for your age. Well, no, actually, this is how I look at 73. I don't, this is my, this is, I'm, I'm not some object, some, I don't fit into some category. Um, I, this is how 73 looks on me. So no, I don't look younger than I look younger than some perceived idea you might have about what aging is, but that isn't really the truth of who I am. Yeah. And uh, what happens in aging with gusto sessions? Well, this is thanks for asking. We have uh, a series of sessions that we offer uh, that are then sponsored by various community organizations like community ed programs or senior centers, community centers, churches, any kind of community setting can sponsor an Aging with Gusto series. And we have uh, well-trained facilitators that come in to help lead discussions. And people start out uh, uh, Talk, you know, we get people talking to each other with, with some big questions about, you know, what does it mean to be old, and what are some of the ways that aging views of aging have shaped my own view of, for myself of aging, um, and then they, we start in in these groups, small groups of conversation as well as large groups, start generating ideas about what would make what would make uh, our older years more meaningful to us and have us fulfill, you know, our life experience. Um, and and uh, I see we have a slide on that. Yes. Why? why well, we talked why, about why addressing ageism, and yeah. uh, we have a slide I think showing some of the uh, act, people actively involved in in these aging with gusto programs uh, mm -hmm. that are in, they're 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 sharing ideas, they're discussing opportunities, they're Creating thinking about list. yes. So it's older people themselves talking among themselves. Um, and in some cases, uh, we do also training for uh, professional development. So, with older pe people who work with older people, but more often it's it's the people, the older people themselves, sitting around tables, learning. You know, what what do your peers really think about this? Somebody might think old is 105. Somebody else might think old is 60. And so, how can we learn from each other and find uh, what's really rich for ourselves and what we think about aging and, and some of the barriers that we come across? And as we gather in these community settings, we have uh, you know people start drafting ideas, and there's big sheets of paper where everybody is jotting down these important elements of of uh, how do they want their personal life to be shaped? How do they want to be engaged in the community? Or how do they want to spend their life at home or with their families? And thinking also in terms of the bigger community, are there ways they want to be active in some way, of politically active maybe, or involved in a theater or choir uh, group, or maybe taking, uh, getting involved in some citizen group, or uh, you know, anything that interests them that helps them feel the sense of satisfaction and fulfillment. Maybe some things they used to do and want to get back to or something they never tried and it's kind of on their bucket list they want to do. 
And I, I bet fellow members really contribute to that. They've had experience in something and yes. that may be relevant to others. Yes, exactly. Somebody will say, oh, I was in one something group. Something I want to get involved in. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. I was in one group recently where they were talking about uh, you know how wonderful it was to spend time with the grandchildren and then somebody else was talking about their volunteer experience and how they loved working with the kids and what happened when they would sit down to read kids in the in this school where they went to help read to kids and so they started here oh you know I never thought about doing that and um, it was just glorious to watch people's ideas just popping up and their stories starting to to be shared so this coming together to have this conversation and to look at what are those, as I say, what are some of those mental barriers that we might have about, you know, I don't want to get old. Well, wh where does that come from? What, what's, what's driving that? Uh, and how can we look at that more deeply? Yes. And my sweetheart came with me to an interview with the volunteer director at, uh, at, at uh, Methodist Hospital. Uh -huh. And she discovered there were openings for people who played the piano. Oh, okay. And so she signed up to do two hours every Friday. Oh, nice. And we're, we've now become missionaries for, <laughs> for finding more people uh, to, to play the piano. Uh -huh. it, it's so satisfying yes. to her, all the compliments that yes. come from the people waiting for a ride home. <laughs> oh, isn't that wonderful? Isn't and, that wonderful? Yeah. And, I remember, uh, you make me think of, a, I teach creative writing classes in, to older adults in various senior settings. And uh, uh, at one point I was teaching one in a church and this 88 year old woman came and she was just full of spunk and dressed like wildly and full of life. And she was so much fun. And halfway through she said, you know, I, a friend of mine dropped me off here tonight and I don't know how I'm gonna get home. And she was just so lively and enjoyable that you know six people offered to give her a ride home, and she every week she got a ride home from somebody because Good. she was. But she was willing to kind of step out and say, "Well, somehow I'm going to find a way home, and you know, create create what I want out there. I'm not going to sit home and wait for something to happen. I'm going to get out there and take my chances." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see a lot of people where I live, Bassett Creek Commons, uh -huh. that would probably. Uh, find a lot more joy if they would just reach out. Yes, and, yes, yes, exactly. In that way and find some role for themselves as right. volunteers. Well, one of the things I do, which I've been doing for actually 15 years now, is I lead a, a uh, creative dance session, improvisational dance every Friday morning in Golden Valley. And it's open to anybody, any woman that's older uh, that wants to participate. And we just have a blast. We do, we, we move, we we laugh a lot, we play together, uh, we get to know each other in very warm and tender ways because our, we're in our bodies, we're flowing freely instead of, you know, sitting in front of a television and kind of rotting away, so. Wow, it, yeah, maybe, been, maybe I'll start a men's dancing oh, I think group. I think that would be great, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> so, well, what are some of the takeaways from the people, for, for the people that have, uh, gone through your program. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we've got a number of quotes uh, that we can show from people that have been involved in the project. And uh, I mean, there's just many, 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 but just I became aware of how pervasive it is and, and how to battle that. So just that yeah. very notion of, well, how, how can I deal with ageism and how can I have, a, how can I be a contributor to changing that whole paradigm? Um, and then, you know, people get excited about the activities that go on, the great facilitation, the discussions, uh, they walk, walk, I mean, they stay around afterwards because the conversations are so good. They continue the conversations in the parking lot because they, they find something there that they hadn't thought about before. They get a new idea, they make a new friend, they start to see possibilities that they hadn't seen before. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. And was, was there another response? Well, there's a, actually, there's, a, there's another, uh, another response, and I really love this one. Help me see aging as a privilege. Yeah. And it, it is. It's a privilege that we get to be older. It's not something to fear or run away from or hide from or pretend isn't happening. Every single day of our lives, is, it's a joy to be alive. And we get to, we get to and decide and make that. Yeah, 
and to yeah. do, and I'm sorry, you said what? Privilege. Yes, privilege, exactly, exactly, right, right. So when, when is the next opportunity for people to take part in Aging with Gusto sessions? Yeah. Well, we actually have a couple of sessions coming up very soon. Uh, there's one in uh, Maple Grove coming up in November that people can participate in. It's sponsored by the Maple, Maple Grove Parks and Recreation along with common, the common bond communities in Maple Grove. And people can contact the Maple Grove Community Center and sign up for that. E either uh, they can call and get information, they can go on look at the online catalog for classes there. Um, or they can sign up at the at the front door at the door. Good uh, good to sign up early enough so that you make sure you get in because there is a limit to how many people that can participate. We try to keep it a nice size group so it isn't so overwhelming. That What's a nice size? Well, the, the most we want to have is 30. Uh, that way, there's a good generated conversation and everybody's voice gets heard in the process of, of mm -hmm. these two hour sessions that are held once every three weeks consecutively, three weeks. And the other one. The other is one. Up even sooner. Well, it is in October 16th, so it's very soon. Uh, the Waters in Plymouth is hosting a series. And that's a beautiful place it, just to visit. It, it's, it's wonderful. And they're offering tours as part of it, and they're oh. offering some snacks. Most of the time, these sessions are, are free. In this case, in both of these cases, the sessions are free. There are usually some snacks, and you may get a tour of the facility, learn more, more things that are going on. Well, that sounds good. so good. I I probably sign up for it. Good, Bill. I hope so because it would be great to have you there. I I know you'd be a, a premier example, and I know you'd contribute a lot to the conversation. Well, I'm I'm hoping to learn something as well. Well, sure, exactly. Not I mean, there you can't help but you know when you open yourself to learning, and that's part of vital aging, and that's why I think the vital aging network is is such a wonderful organization because it's a place where people do come together to learn from one another to see what's what's out there that's growing. Um, actually, just I'll mention briefly that in addition to the Aging with Gusto program, there are periodic f uh, public forums that are held with speakers that come in to talk about some of these uh, opportunities, uh, just new ideas, new ways of thinking about things. Uh, there's another program called Wellness 50 Plus where local communities gather together to just uh, in, bring together people in their own immediate community to instead of waiting for somebody else to set up a program for them to go to they come together and say well what do we want to do what do we want to have happening and how can we create that together and where do they call to hear about that well that the vital aging network has has a website uh, it's vital hyphen aging hyphen network dot org and you can learn about all of the different programs there they've actually also got another a longer term program called Evolve where people get a chance who want to exercise some leadership in this whole area of aging to learn more about aging issues and to develop some skills so that they can be a voice out there in the community. So uh, there's a number of different wonderful opportunities through the Vital Aging Network and, and, and Aging Gusto is, is, a, is, a, is a good place to start actually. Are there organizations that are contributing to Vital Aging Network? Well, with the Vital Aging Network partners with a lot of organizations yeah. to pr put on these different programs. And in the case of, of these vital, uh, Aging with Gusto programs, like we partner with Maple Grove Community uh, our Parks and Recreation, we partner with the Waters, so, and, and different health care organizations are also very interested in what Vital Aging Network is doing. And they are supporting some of these programs because they know that if you keep people well and keep them engaged in the community and, and keep them learning and keep a positive outlook toward, uh, toward aging, as the research shows, I mean, if they can live seven and a half years longer, that's health care, health organizations want to support that kind of effort. So I think, and this is so grassroots, it's everyday people getting together to make this happen. When my last hour comes, yes. I hope I can have a smile on my face uh -huh. because <laughs> I think Vital Aging Network would help me. I think so get too. There. I think so too. And you know, I, I wanted to say that one of the one of the things that happened when I turned fifty that got me thinking about being older was the Minnesota uh, writer Meridel Lesur had just died, and it showed a picture of her on her basically on her deathbed, uh, surrounded by manuscripts on her bed. 
of, from p other writers that she was coaching and giving help to. And I thought, now that's the way I want to live my life. I want to live right up to until my last breath. <laughs> well, we have less than four minutes left. Yes. I'd like to give you an opportunity to address whatever else you care to speak of. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just, my passion is really to invite the viewers that are, that are watching us to say, well, how do I want to have my older years? Do I, can, can I be in charge of my older years? In fact, uh, I was out at the waters recently and a woman, I heard a woman saying, well, I'm, never, I'm not really sure who's in charge of my life, me or my kids. <laughs> and you know, it, and, you know that, I mean, it's, it's a funny thing, but it's also true sometimes. It's like older people feel like, well, who's in charge? I mean, it's, it's the Medicare's in charge of my life and, and, and my kids are in charge of my life and I don't really, I have to kind of wait and see what everybody else wants and then I'll do, I'll follow along. And so when people get a chance to really step up and say, no, I, I'm going to make choices. I'm going to be the one that's going to decide what my life is going to be about. I'm glad I've never had to say that to my kids. Uh -huh. they, are continuing to respect me. That is wonderful. And expect me to be in charge of my life. That, that's that's at, fabulous. At an old age. Yes, yes, and that's the way it should be. We should be able to determine what we want to be doing, and to um, and to and continue learning because that's that's part of vital aging is being a learner, being curious, finding new things, or deepening. You know, it's also a time of great spiritual study and, and understanding deepening our understanding of why we're here and what it is we get to leave behind and how how our life what was our life about what makes it meaningful so all of these conversations i think are really fun to have and the aging with gusto is a place where those kind of conversations can be had in an informal setting where there's no expectation no no uh, agenda except for your own enrichment and for your own process of self-discovery one of the challenges that I've taken up lately, it's with a, a, uh, a fellow minister in Massachusetts, uh -huh. and she has agreed to compete for having the first uh, memoir published. Uh -huh. So. I've had a few things published. In ah, life. so now you're getting ready to try and to so do your memoir. All right. Oh, so you two are you have two are in competition. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's beautiful. Well, why not? Why not? Our, our life stories are important, and yeah. it's, it's important to share them because how else is anybody going to know that we were even here if we don't share our stories and, and the wisdom that we've accumulated over our lifetime? Yeah. Exactly. Well, a lot of people have told me I should write my I would, story. I'm going to endorse that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And I guess I'll try that. Yes, and I want to close out, if I may, by with this quote, because I, I so think it makes sense. Age is simply the number of years the world has been enjoying you. Oh, what a great idea. Uh, isn't that wonderful? So if somebody yeah. asks you how old you are, you can say, well, I've, you know, I, I can say, well, I've been, spent 73 years with, here with people and enjoying my presence. <laughs> <laughs> Especially my parents. Aha. Uh -huh. oh, I had such loving parents. Oh, that's marvelous, marvelous. Well, we're very fortunate to be where we are and to keep being able to grow. And yeah. you're such a wonderful example of vital aging. It's, it's an honor to be here with you. By the way, we're not being recorded now. Oh, I thought it was, it was going down. The numbers were going down. It just went to one. <laughs>